The public is not being told the truth about Arctic meltdown. Hello. Um, this is the most important day of my life. Uh, as chair of AMEG, I am presenting new information, observation, and theory, too new to be in the IPCC reports. So this will be news to many of you, probably most of you, or all of you. Climate change is happening now. It's the weird weather. Um, and, and it's about to get far worse. The abrupt climate change the world has been observing recently is, is due to Arctic warming. If the Arctic continues to warm, things will get worse and worse, and we'll end up with that situation described in the New York Times here, when the planet will become uninhabitable, I'm afraid. And that's happening now, and we've got to stop it. Uh, the Arctic has started a vicious cycle of warming and melting. This is the start of a runaway meltdown of the, of, of the whole of the Arctic ice cap. It has to be stopped. AMEG believes that it can be stopped by cooling the Arctic quickly. The public is not being told the truth about Arctic meltdown. Governments are doing nothing to stop Arctic meltdown. This is why I'm giving this press conference. We need action. Um, I'm a scientist and an engineer. I, I'm educated as a scientist and... Uh, did engineering and went into computer systems. It is my, my amazing good luck that we are here to, today. As the sea ice retreats, open water is exposed. Sunshine penetrates through fresh water on the surface into the heavy saline water below. The heat is stored through the Arctic winter with the ice above like a night storage heater. Then the next year, this heat melts the ice a bit faster. And this explains why we have a vicious spiral of warming and melting. Uh, Peter Wadhams agrees. He has made careful measurements of sea ice thickness in a number of submarine journeys spanning several decades. He observed a remarkable decline in sea ice thickness, and it seemed to be an accelerating decline. At a, real, uh, at a recent Royal Society event, he presented an analysis of all the measurements showing an exponential decline. This is the reality. Don't believe the models. This is the reality. You can see it from this graph. Uh, even the child can understand that that is plunging, that cur curve of the observations. And what does that mean when it gets to zero? It means there's no sea ice cover over the Arctic Ocean. It is coming fast. It could, you know, it could even be next year. Well, let's hope it isn't. There's already an escalation in lots of things as a result of the warming that's going on, Ex exponential effects. There's rapid emission of methane, uh, loss in Greenland with exponential rise in sea level, which you can see on the left, and there's a disruption of jet stream behavior with abrupt climate change. This is the weird weather, and it's leading to crop failures. It's leading to ri rising food prices, and, and it's showing conflict. And the conflict are all those uh, um, unrest in uh, Egypt and Syria and Uganda. We are busy arranging the chairs on the deck. Yeah. So we dread this. We all, in our group, we all dread this blue ocean event. And it could be as early as September 2015. But soon after this event, there, there will be big changes in the atmospheric circulation, the ocean currents, locking the Arctic into a sea ice free state and then all hell will let loose. Can you imagine the effect for all those islands, low-lying countries, and conurbations by the sea? It is catastrophic. Then, there is complete chaos in the weather. Uh, if you start warming the North Pole enough, you get rid of that whole circulation at the North Pole. It's a complete change of climate, much more severe than anything we've dreamt of happening. There is a time bomb sitting there. We can observe what's happening to our planet from space, and we get a good perspective and think of it from outside. Now it is up to us humans to use our intelligence and technology to restore the old norm of constant climate and sea level to our planet. We can do it. Of course we can do it, but only if we act quickly and decisively. We are entering a period of consequences. We cannot avoid this period and we are in it now. Now, the fossil fuel co companies don't really want the Arctic cool. What we need is, uh, is leadership and the setting up of an international task force. Yet, 
we are not being given a choice. Yesterday, I went round asking all sorts of people what they thought about the Arctic situation as I described it. People were obviously shocked, deeply shocked. But one person was not shocked. He told me something that shocked me. I have to tell you because I came to Lima to tell the truth. They, and, I, and this is what he said, they, and I don't know who they were, are, do know what's going on. They do know that the sea ice is disappearing very rapidly. They do not want geoengineering to cool the Arctic. They do know that geoengineering would work, but they are only too happy when people talk about geoengineering as being too dangerous. They don't care about what happens to the planet if the sea ice disappears. That is exactly what they want to happen. Do these people understand what's going on? By letting the sea ice disappear, they're creating misery for themselves, their children, their stakeholders, the whole world. It'll become a matter of life and death. They are being unbelievably stupid. But let us put this behind us. We don't want to make enemies. We need everybody behind this effort to cool the Arctic before it's too late. But this is a call for collaboration from everybody who can help avert this catastrophe, to avoid us passing the point of no return, the blue ocean event that could be happening any year. So we've got to really get a move on. This could be the greatest collaborative venture of all time, where everybody in the world wants the same result. This can be a turning point in history. Let's make it happen. There is a way to avoid the growing misery, starvation, economic collapse and bloodshed around, that we're seeing already growing around the world by the simple expedient of cooling the Arctic. Let us be clear that the choice we make now, whether or not to act quickly, decisively and with determination to cool the Arctic, is a matter of life or death for our grandchildren. This is Amex's message. This is why I've come to Lima to tell you, please make my trip to Lima worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you very much, John.